Hello everybody, welcome to another Bobonomics video. I'm Bobo, and today I'll be talking about why I don't think the U.S. economy will suffer as much as a result of the COVID pandemic. I know most people's media and news cycles have probably been dominated by this event, so I'm going to try and have fresh information, I'll keep it short, and try and cover things that not a lot of people are covering. There are two main reasons why I don't think the COVID-19 pandemic is going to permanently affect our society in any significant way, or cripple our economy. The first main reason is that it was generally overblown and the fatality rate is much lower than what we anticipated. The second reason is that most people realistically understood that this was going to be temporary and that we would be able to work and get our supply chains back up running eventually. Along with new innovations, vaccine development being streamlined and bureaucratic restrictions being lifted, we can see that we're generally going to be on the road to recovery. So let's talk about the first point. Why do I think this pandemic was overblown, and why do I think the fatality rate is lower than what is currently being published? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First, we have to realize that almost half of COVID deaths at one point were coming from New York State. New York City is the most populated city in the U.S., and a lot of media is headquartered there. Therefore, we were getting the perspective from media companies that were actually being largely affected, and we were getting the kind of coastal view instead of what actually was reflective of where we live. Of course, this disease affected multiple parts of the country, but we're not going to act like it devastated or impacted every single region or county. There was a lot of media hype, and some people realized this according to this Pew Research Center, and so I don't think people are going to be as devastated long term. By the time I upload this video, I expect the stock market will have rebounded even more, and unemployment would have been cut. Outside of the mass media push that we saw that could have influenced legislation, another reason I don't think COVID is going to destroy the economy or anything is because the fatality rate is actually really low. If you just Google US cases and deaths, the first numbers you're going to get are basically saying that the fatality rate is sitting at under 6%. Now, 6% by itself isn't an awful number, especially considering that the life expectancy of someone with COVID versus someone without COVID is about the same but I think it's even lower for a couple of reasons. For number one, there's strong evidence that people have been over-attributing COVID as a cause of death. I'm not saying this person didn't have COVID, but there was a guy that tested negative and still got labeled coronavirus on his death certificate. And Project Veritas published a good video on how some doctors will just label COVID as a cause of death, even if they're not sure that's actually how somebody died. Here's a short clip from the video. Feel free to check it out in the description below. So anyway, despite the accounts of multiple funeral directors and doctors saying stuff like this, we can also look at antibody testing, which shows that many, many more people got COVID than we originally thought, which means that we got more cases, but the same amount of deaths are reported. Even using common sense, you know that not everybody got tested. Not everyone that got coronavirus got tested. I haven't gotten tested, and maybe I got coronavirus, but was asymptomatic. I don't know. Given that these preliminary antibody tests wouldn't have thousands of false positives, we can see that it's very likely the fatality rate for COVID in New York is under 1%, and that's the hardest hit area. So knowing that we have these antibody tests in multiple big cities and they're rolling out even more, and we know that some deaths are probably over-attributed to COVID, we can comfortably estimate that the recovery rate is over 99% for someone that gets COVID. The fatality rate is literally comparable to the flu, and we know way less about the novel coronavirus than we do about influenza. Regardless, I'm not trying to downplay its real effects, so still make sure you're washing your hands, coughing your elbow, and, you know, maintain proper distance. These are things that you should probably be doing anyway. So now that we know this, we've actually seen some people adjust to their deaths from coronavirus, and we're also seeing more places open up now. So I think we have a bright outlook for the economy in general. 
I think we'll probably have a vaccine ready for most people as of 2021 because we already see now in trials that there could be some effectiveness in these new vaccines along with minimal side effects, so that's good news. I think the biggest concern for me right now economically is the risk of inflation because we've spent trillions of dollars in response to this, so that's probably going to be the biggest factor in if our economy is going to go south or not. I expect our second quarter numbers to confirm that we're in a recession, of course, but I also expect a big bounce back because we're going to go from lots of people unemployed or furloughed to basically everyone back in the workforce. So even if we technically are in a recession right now, I expect one of the most rapid recoveries in recent history, especially if people are smart with their money, paying off debts, and preparing for any possible changes. If we got a payroll tax cut and limited some government spending, I think that would also boost the private sector even more than now. So after I finished recording, I actually found some important information that I'm going to leave here. I mentioned this already, but I expect people to bring this up. But this headline is somewhat misleading because it's more applicable for places with less cases, and it talks about more about the fact that you might not have immunity even if you have the antibodies. NYC is the biggest hotspot in the U.S., false negatives are possible too, and I underestimated cases and overestimated deaths just in case regardless. The CDC is now saying 0.4% is closer to the fatality rate for people with symptoms, so this isn't including the one-third that are asymptomatic. It looks like I was right and the CDC is changing their narrative, but regardless, make sure you're sharing because I know some critics have been silenced. This upload isn't particularly an anti-shutdown video or anything, but it is showing how the mainstream media numbers are misleading. Well guys, that's the end of my video. Hopefully I made my case well and I hope everyone's staying safe during these times. If you're interested, I'm going to have a bunch of the sources in my description below, so make sure you check those out and stay informed. Please leave questions, comments, and concerns. I appreciate a good fact check too, although I think all of my numbers are correct and even rounded conservatively to adjust for margins of errors and prove my point well, but I appreciate discourse all the time and leave me recommendations on what you guys would like. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. Again, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hope you have a great day.